welcome to Loftus Road. Here we go then, back again with another stadium tour. Today, it's bloody raining and no, we're not in Stoke. It is cold, wet and windy. And I did struggle to park because Loftus Road, Queen's Park Rangers ground, there's no parking. So if you are to come, make sure you get on Just Park, like I did over there, and I'm on someone's driveway. But let's walk together to Loftus Road. Even though I've drove past it, it's really not far from where we're going. I've parked by this park. Hammersmith Park. So it's literally through this park, up a road, and then we're gonna be there. And I'm not being a prima donna, guys, with this brolly today. I'm merely protecting my camera, wink, wink. Now, let's get out of the way early, shall we? I've always had a soft spot for Queen's Park Rangers, but I genuinely have, because I think a lot of you will agree that, you know, when we were kids, do you find that when you were a kid, whatever clubs were in the Premier League, or even Division One, if you're a bit older, whatever clubs were in the top flight. When you were a, when you were a young lad, or girl, might have girls watching this channel, those are the clubs you almost feel like are maybe bigger than what they are. Now, I'm not disputing the fact that QPR are a big club, but in my mind, clubs like QPR, Sheffield Wednesday, Coventry, uh, Southampton, Blackburn, of course, who won the Premier League, they've always got a place in my heart. I always, I always feel that they, they have a God-given right to be in the top flight of English football, which they don't. That's the beauty of the English Football League, and that's why we were so against the Super League. Almost taking people's heads off with this brolly. That's why we were so against the Super League, because we love the tier system in English football. But yes, I've always uh, had a bit of a soft spot for QPR. My earliest memories, of course, would be the kit, as most people's would. That glorious blue and white horizontal, blue and white? white horizontal stripe kit and obviously Les Ferdinand was their main man. You could almost attribute the sale of Les Ferdinand to Newcastle as to why QPR would get relegated from the Premier League the next season in a 95-96 season. If we're speaking about the 90s and QPR, I mean they were, to quote uh, Ash Rose who if you, those of you who listen to the Alive and Kick in 90s football podcast, he'll tell you they were the top London club in, what was it, the 93, 94 season, I might be wrong, QPR finished fifth, and they were very much smashing it. Again, with the help of Les Ferdinand, of course. Let's just get a little glimpse of that park, shall we? The Hammersmith Park. You can tell it's windy, because me, uh, me brolly is trying to blow away from me. Glorious park, I'm sure there's some relation to Queen's Park Rangers, but I have done a little bit of research for this video. I don't do a lot of research, as you know. These are very much spur of the moment trips. Yeah, there's a Japanese garden in there, apparently. But yes, on my way here, I was listening to some facts about Queen's Park Rangers. Uh, did you know that QPR had over 20 grounds, apparently? I think that might be a record until they moved to, Loft to Loftus Road. So they were very much unsettled until they landed here at Loftus Road. Now, Loftus Road is very close to the surrounding houses, flats, which is why I found it very difficult to park. So if they are to develop further and maybe have a bit of a change of fortunes, because they are battling relegation as a film in this in the championship, in order to extend Loftus Road, well, they basically couldn't really extend Loftus Road. So they would have to move. When they were facing financial trouble in the early 2000s, there was talk of maybe a merge with Wimbledon a club in which we might check out later on if the rain holds off. If not, I'll have to leave that for another day. But no fan wants to see their club merge with another club. Now today we could go with the obvious, we could go with the more recent history with the takeover, that famous documentary, the change of badge and so on. We could have a, a bit of a laugh at QPR's expense, but we don't do that at, at Royce Football Paradise. We very much celebrate the beauty of football, hence the name Paradise. I am lost. Where are we going? It's over there. It's right in front of me. That's crazy that I've just mentioned that change in badge because I can actually see, I was going to say the new badge, but it's now the old badge because they reverted back to that famous QPR badge and Loftus Road is right in front of me. My brolly might be trying to escape, but hopefully you guys aren't trying to escape. Jesus Christ. Well, I'm having a battle with the brolly guys, but hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come. As I was saying, that change of badge. Behind me over there, as you can see, it's the Queen's Tavern, West London's finest. 
So we've got a pub called the Queen's Tavern, which I'm guessing is a bit of a QPR supporters club. Now that little spoof of the badge they did is a spoof of that badge they changed to during the era. A lot of QPR fans might want to forget, but that said, they did get back to the top flight. They did get back to the Premier League and QPR had regained some of that 90s glory I was talking about. So then guys, as of right now, it's just past 9 a.m. The tour is booked for 11 a.m. And if you are interested in doing a Loftus Road tour like I am today, they do tours every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Again, as a film in this. And I think they do match day tours possibly. I'm pretty sure they do a weekend tour as well. But as I mentioned previously, I'm trying to keep the missus sweet and film my videos during the week while she's at work, like any good boyfriend would do. All right then guys, so behind me, we've got the Bhatia stand, B-H-A-T-I-A, -A, the Bhatia stand. And over there, you've got the media entrance. You've got the box office and you've got the main reception area over there. So I'm guessing that's where we need to report to when we do the tour. It's still really early. We are gonna get in that club shop before the tour though, just to use up a bit of time. Apparently the club shop opens at 9.30. So we're going to try and find the club shop in a moment. But yeah, it is a bit dated, the exterior of the ground. It's obviously not gonna be your nicest looking ground because QPR have had a lot of money struggles and so on. And just the nature of the fact of where it is, they can't really develop too much. A little bit old looking from the outside, but nothing, nothing major, nothing we can criticize too much. We try not to criticize anything too much on Roy's Football Paradise, even though we did have a bit of a cheeky dig at QPR's local rivals, Chelsea, the other week. Why does it always rain on me? Oh my God, this rain is relentless, but we're gonna battle on guys. If you are a subscriber of the channel, you'll know we love kind of personalised brickwork and artwork around football stadiums. Clubs often sell bricks and in this case it looks like tiles to fans and it's really nice to kind of integrate fans, the community within the actual football stadium. I, I'm always more impressed when it's with a new stadium just because I think when clubs move to new stadiums they lose a bit of their DNA, a bit of their history but obviously this has been here years so this is basically marking 100 years at Loftus Road. So as you can see behind me over there, they've been here, QPR, since 1917. As we mentioned, they, were, they went from ground to ground prior to settling here. So from 1917 to now, which is 2024, they've been here at Loftus Road. But this is to mark 100 years, 1917 to 2017. Let's just have a little read of some of the, the tributes. Um, we've got in memory of Tim Lovell, come on you ours. Raj Maharara, QPR, number one fan, Rangers till I die. Kev, happy 40th, love Mum, Lorna, Dave and Kieran. QPR, my heart and soul, James and Richard, Luke O'Brien, 20. In memory of Derek Knight, Roy and Al, up the R's, love from Emma. So I think people are having these as like birthday presents, Christmas presents, and also QPR fans who have passed away and so on. Now, just behind me over here, guys, it's not quite open yet, I don't think. Shutters are down. We've got the QPR Superstore. Now, it, it does make me laugh because you'd have a, a club store and then clubs were having super stores and now clubs have mega stores. The name just gets more and more sensationalistic. But when we do visit Premier League grounds, because remember this season, guys, we're visiting all 20 Premier League stadiums. We've currently done 18. We've just got Brighton's Amex and Luton's Kenilworth Road to do. When we, when we go there, should I say, we have to buy one item from the club shop. But if it's not a Premier League club, we buy at our discretion. So we're going to come back here. We're going to do what we normally do now. We're going to do a 360 of the ground and then we're going to finish back here, which I believe is the front, the main kind of entrance of the stadium, back at the shop, and then we can start the tour afterwards. Right next to the shop though, is the visiting supporter entrance. So if you're coming here on an away day, guys, right next to the shop, that's where you need to be. So then if you are sat and having your way to the ground, I, str I strongly suggest you don't because parking's a nightmare. But again, if you're coming down here on an away day, that front, that reception, that shop, this is South Africa Road. It's got a little hint of Only Fools and Horses about it. That's not South Africa House behind me, it's Campbell House. Um, we're gonna connect to the main road, which has a really long name, Blowham, Blowham Fontin Road? Is that what it's called? This is, whoa, this brolly, this brolly isn't gonna hold up, guys. I thought I played a tactical masterclass by bringing this umbrella. But this is what happens on YouTube when you're a serious YouTuber. Well, I'm not a serious YouTuber, am I? I'm taking a mick half the time, but 
when you are on YouTube, you're going to be faced with challenges, guys. And today is definitely going to be a challenge. But off the top of my head, I mean, obviously, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up in the 90s, born in 89. But those a bit older than me, especially those that grew up in the 80s, I'll probably remember Loftus Road, most famously for the plastic pitch. Now, QPR introduced a plastic pitch, an artificial grass pitch in 1981. And they had that pitch, despite it being somewhat unpopular, especially with away teams, from 81 to 88. So about seven years they battled on with that plastic pitch. But that plastic pitch often worked in QPR's favour. Opposing teams really didn't know how to play on that thing, but teams like QPR and later on Luton, who introduced a pitch of their own, a plastic pitch of their own, really utilised that advantage. So guys, next street down. I mean, there was nothing eventful there. There's nothing for me to show you. It's just flats. But we've got LSC Road now. LSC Road, London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. So closest sort of big clubs, you could say, would be Fulham, Chelsea, as I said, Wimbledon aren't far as well. And Brentford's not far away. I literally came down the M4 and then went on to the A4 and then made my way here. I mean, this is, this is all right. Again, there's nothing too much to show you because you can't really see the exterior of the ground. Normally we do these 360s, we see what the outside of the ground looks like, but it very much blends into the houses. A um, friend of mine at the Milk Round, Lee, he, he follows West Brom home and away, and he said, you'll be surprised. Loftus Road just creeps upon you. You don't see it from a distance, but you can see floodlights. And we do love uh, the old school looking floodlights on the channel. I think there's a Facebook page called like Floodlight, Pl floodlight Porn. Um, you know I get excited over corners of football stadiums. There is no corners to this. They're very much kind of, uh, the roofs connect on each corner, but we've got a cheeky bit of floodlight guys. So I'm gonna hide my excitement because people are around. Let's just get a cheeky glimpse of those floodlights, shall we? Let's go. So we've got a brief, so we've got a brief respite from the rain. A little cheeky glimpse over there. Guys, if you uh, saw this at first glance and if you did see the Fulham Craven Cottage tour, these houses behind me on Blowen, Blowen Fontaine Avenue, you'd mistake for the ones leading up to the famous Johnny Haynes, the Stevenage Road stand where they had the pavilion. This is a little bit different, not quite as pretty, let's say, let's say it as it is, but you can tell we're in the, the borough of Fulham or whatever it's called. Try not to get the brolly in the way. So behind me here, guys, we've got the entrance, the turnstiles to the Achillea Security Stand Upper. They're such, such complicated names for Loftus Road stands and, and roads and stuff. Achilleus, is that, is that how you say it? Over here as well, you've got the away disabled supporters entrance. We're on LSC Road over here. So there we go. Let's have a little look at this stadium map, shall we? Right then guys, let's get all cozy with this stadium map over here. Obviously we're, we're where the visiting supporters would go. This is also a disabled entrance as well. Um, we're gonna meet on to the Stan Bowles stand. He's a legend of the club, Stan Bowles. And then we're going to be on to Loftus Road itself. So good to know. Now, guys, how old school is this entranceway to the Stambol stand? We often moan about change. We get all nostalgic and how, set, how we say football isn't what it used to be. But this is probably as close to old school turnstiles as you're going to get in 2024. Very rugged. You've got those spikes on top. Um, but yeah, that's the entranceway. Blocks are R to X of the Stan Bowl stand. Again, we're going to get a closer look. We're doing a tour. I'm looking forward to it. I, I love doing tours of big, posh Premier League grounds like the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, like the Emirates, like Old Trafford, maybe not. But I, do you know what I actually prefer doing? These slightly older club, or slightly older clubs, cl slightly older stadiums from slightly smaller clubs. I just find them to be a little bit different than what you'd expect. Everyone tours the big ones, don't they? But we did Portsmouth last week and St. Mary's with Southampton as well. That was a massive contrast. Oh my God, right. What did I say about corners of football stadiums? This isn't giving us any kind of cheeky glimpse, but <laughs> this is very rugged as we're on the topic of rugged and old school. I feel like I'm, I'm in the 80s, guys. Have I time traveled? I feel like this is 1984. I feel like I've gone back 40 years. Wow. Does not look like a football stadium at first glance. You've got the old school floodlights. You've got a rough and ready. I mean, that's not even a QPR blue, is it? Slightly faded, slightly turquoise. That's crazy. Wasn't expecting that. So guys, just come off LSE Road, which would mean this must be Loftus Road. It's south. Stadium over there. You've got another entrance turnstiles over there. We're going to check those out in a moment. But Loftus Road does seem quite posh. 
I think. Sorry, um, my love, is this, is this Loftus Road, the actual road? Brilliant, thank you for that. Yes, the lady just confirmed this is indeed Loftus Road. Let's go and check those turnstiles out. Even when the sun is shining, I can avoid the light absolutely love that guys this is the Loftus Road Stadium and the, but that is the Loftus Road stand and I love the fact that it says welcome to the loft brilliant again I don't want to overuse the word old school today guys because I think that is going to be the theme of the tour of the video drop us a comment with your memories coming here as an away fan or even if you are a QPR fan your home memories here at Loftus Road <laughs> It's a really weird one, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, a stadium of this age, normally you'd get individual stands, which these are, can I just add. Um, but because, again, it's such a, a tight kind of area, each corners of each stand meet. So the roofs actually touch and the stairwells kind of connect between the stands. So it really is quite unique and unorthodox for an old school stand. So there's not actually corners for us to get all aroused about, but there kind of is, they're different. We love quirky, unique and different on Roy's Football Paradise. So as I walk down here, guys, we're going to basically end up uh, pretty much where we started when we walked in. I'm hoping the club shop is going to be open. When we do go into club shops, they often don't let us film. So I'm going to try and do a sneaky bit of filming. But otherwise, if I can't film, I'm going to have to buy some and show you what I bought from the club shop. So let's get over there now. sure how this has happened guys because I've turned up knowing very little if I'm honest about QPR and I've just walked out the shop prior to the tour as a hardcore bloody QPR fan so I'm wearing the 95 to 96 away strip and I know this wasn't the best season for QPR because they did indeed get relegated but I said I always had a soft spot for QPR I do say that about most clubs but I did not only because of the fact that they were a Premier League club I also love this shirt because it's weird their home shirt is blue and white hoops and the away shirt is essentially blue and white hoops small thin white hoops and a dark navyish color away quite unorthodox i know chelsea are doing a similar thing with their away strip very similar to the home strip covers colors but anyway as now a hardcore bloody ranger i need to get some facts to you about the club about loftus road as we mentioned we mentioned the artificial pitch just to confirm they were the very first to do so they were pioneers they led the way with that bloody artificial pitch, even though it only lasted seven years. But QPR, obviously we mentioned they played at Loftus Road since 1917, but Loftus Road had football matches there long before QPR were there. We mentioned QPR wandering around trying to get a ground, but from 1904 to 1915, a small amateur club called Shepherd's Bush FC played their football at Loftus Road. So Loftus Road was here prior to QPR being here at Loftus Road. I mean, that's not a rare thing. We found that with, with other grounds as well. But as we said, they've been here a long time. Now Loftus Road has survived two world wars. We always, we can't really joke about it. You shouldn't make jokes to do with Hitler, but Hitler definitely must have had a hatred for English football stadiums, stadia, grounds, because every bloody ground we go to during World War II was bombed by bloody Hitler, by the Germans. And Loftus Road is no different. Loftus Road took a pound in during World War II. But yeah, you damn Hitler, not only for your hideous acts and being the most uh, hateable person to ever exist, but you've also gone for our beloved English football clubs. Hit us where it bloody hurts. Anyway, around this time, uh, I've got this kit on. You might remember Ray Wilkins, the crab, former Manchester United player, was the player manager of Queen's Park Rangers around this time. And to be fair, I was listening to Les Ferdinand on a podcast and he almost joined Man United. I think in the ninth, at the end of the 93-94 season, he was going to join, but then Ray Wilkins joined QPR and he said, I'll only do so if we keep Les Ferdinand. So ironically, a former Manchester United player prevented star man Les Ferdinand from joining Manchester United. They ended up getting Andy Cole. I probably got my timings wrong. 
but yeah, uh, Ferdinand would leave at the end of this season anyway. No, before this season. He left at the end of the 94-95 season, didn't he? He wasn't part of the relegation squad repping the shirt I've got on right now. And let's do this bloody QPR tour, because I am buzzing for it, because I am now QPR till I die. Come on, you ours. Let's do this. Okay, so post-match, this is where Marty will come up and the away team manager. Obviously, when it's not match we do maintenance, we don't always leave the tunnels like this on a match day. Um, so yeah, on a match day, we'll normally have all the press here, so whether it be radio, newspapers, anything like that, basically. So always on a match day, the away team will go fast, just because obviously they've got more distance to travel. Obviously, the home team manager's not allowed in here at the same time as the away one. How many football grounds do you know that has a sofa in the ground? So a few facts, the screen below was bought second hand from Villa. They were going to install some floodlights on the Stanley Bowl stand, but because the stand was built in possibly the 70s, the new lights won't hold up. Stand to come down. That box over in the far corner is what Sky Sports would use. Football matches were hosted here. Obviously a lot of fans moan about our leg room in the home end, but this is 100% worse in the away end than leg room. You can see now why fans in the away end stand for the home game when the stands are this tight. Yeah, not a lot of leg room between, uh, between aisles down here.
just to confirm those seats behind me up in the corner I use that to show you just for a joke they don't actually sell those uh, seats apparently so don't think that QPR are selling tickets with a massively obstructive view because they're not but above it uh, that room I said that Sky Sports use is also rented out as a hospitality room when the cameras aren't here or when T when uh, QPR aren't playing on TV. So we're currently in the stand bowl stand and you might have noticed the tents behind with artificial light. Obviously that's because there's literally no sunlight hitting this part of the pitch. They have to move these tents up and down this side of the pitch, not just in winter, but literally year round because it doesn't get any light. Apparently we've got police, um, police surveillance behind us right now. We recently went to St Mary's, we've mentioned earlier on, and there was an actual police cell, a couple of police cells in the ground. Now, apparently the surveillance will catch you coming all the way off the train, all the way to Loftus Road, so don't be causing no trouble. So this is now known as the Pro Arms Bar, so you can see on the wall as well, there's a lot of famous pictures of famous players throughout. Over the years we haven't had our good luck, so I don't think it's wild. So, if we come over here, we've got Ryan Bradford's top scorer trophies, which were presented to him, okay? Also, Apparently this shirt over here cost the club 200 grand to buy back, but they got it back. So despite being really close to the pitch, these seats over here are really cheap. Can you guess why? I'm getting absolutely soaked because there's no roof. So if you want some cheap seats, hit these up, but you're going to get absolutely drenched. Apparently the walls are actually snakeskin walls and the table over there is tiger skin. It's cold when it's able to put the aircon on, so we don't want to feel comfortable here. We don't give them a tactics board, so we get five and ten thousand pounds a minute. Because obviously sponsorship deals and stuff like that. In the Premier League, there's a lot more. So when we went to the Premier League, this training room was in such a state, it had to be done up.
Well, guys, absolutely love that tour. Fair play. I didn't catch his name. Fair play if ever he does see this. The uh, tour guide on the Loftus Road tour. I mean, as we said, it's not the biggest of stadiums. I think the capacity was, what, like 18,000, just over 18,000. But I loved, I, again, we overused the word quirky on Royce Football Paradise. This is the definition of quirky. It must be a West London thing because we mentioned it at Craven Cottage. I mean, Chelsea, I was maybe a little bit harsh, but it definitely had some quirky elements too. And even Brentford's new ground, for a new ground, it is quite quirky. So West London is the place to go, guys, for quirky stadiums. Now, just a reminder as well, the 1882 founding date, they were founded as Christchurch Rangers. A few things before we go, guys. I mean, the, essentially it is a new badge because it's slightly different to the one prior to the one introduced during the four-year plan. If you've never seen the four-year plan documentary, guys, check it out. It's one of those <laughs> I think most QPR fans would like to forget, but it definitely had some highs and lows. Lots of changes, adjustments to those hospitality lounges, bars and stuff were introduced during that four-year plan era. That's the changing rooms, probably, probably two of the worst changing rooms we've been to. Again, I'm not trying to slag anything off because I really enjoyed that and I, I really loved Loftus Road but the nature of being a small ground that away changing room was very rough and ready though very rough indeed and the home changing room wasn't that much better just basically had a lick of paint but it was that awkward owl shape I'm sure managers doing their tactics pre-game find that shape find the shape of the changing room rather awkward but that's what you get with old school quirky ass stadiums isn't it guys ladies and gents if you enjoyed this bloody video make sure you tap that like button let us know in the comments below where you'd like us to go to next i've just walked past the park and again if you are an afc wimbledon fan we will be back for the new plow lane as well as taking a little look at wimbledon's history i don't feel like in this weather i could do it justice today again quality over quantity here on Rise Football Paradise. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in one of these videos next to me. Thanks for watching.